Special K or ketamine, the party drug that many of us know about. What else is out there that may be able to exert a similar antidepressant effect without the side effects? What's up guys, my name is Lucas, the founder of Ergogenic Health, and my mission is to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So please, if you do not care about your health, please do not subscribe to my channel. So ultimately in today's video, what I'm gonna do is look at a ketamine alternative that not many people really know about that appears to share very similar mechanisms to ketamine. But first of all, let's take a look at what is ketamine. Ketamine is a non-barbiturate disassociative anesthetic drug. Ketamine has been approved for general anesthesia either alone or in combination with other medications. It's a superb drug for use in short-term medical procedures that do not require skeletal muscle relaxation. It has been approved for the induction of general anesthesia as a pre-anesthetic to other general anesthetic agents. Now, we need to explore some of the uses of ketamine in medicine. So until recently, ketamine was used as a anesthetic, analgesic agent and sedative, and also for the treatment of chronic pain syndromes. Ketamine administration has long been known to mediate a wide variety of pharmacological effects, including disassociation, analgesia, sedation, catalepsy, and bronchodilation. Though ketamine is known most widely for its anesthetic properties, research has uncovered multiple novel uses for the drug, including neuroprotection, combating inflammation and tumors, treatment of depression, seizures, chronic pain, and also headache. Now, I just want to obviously highlight that this is absolutely not medical advice. Please do consult with your healthcare professional before undergoing anything that I discuss in this video. So firstly, I wanna take a look at this particular study. Um, it was titled, A Randomized Controlled Trial of Repeated Ketamine Administration for Chronic post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, interestingly, ketamine administration was proven to be effective in this particular model, this particular study. And so I'll just read out some of the results from the study itself. So the ketamine group showed a significantly greater improvement in some of the scores that they used to assess post-traumatic stress disorder. 67% of participants in the ketamine group were treatment responders compared to 20% in the sham group. Among ketamine responders, the median time of loss of response was 27.5 days following the two week course of infusions. Ketamine infusions were well tolerated overall without serious adverse events. So we can see that ketamine, you know, has a broad spectrum effect and is being used to treat a variety of health conditions. So now let's take a look at your brain on ketamine. Now, many people immediately assume that ketamine is simply an NMDA antagonist, which by the way, magnesium is also a very mild NMDA antagonist. But I wanna explore some of the other effects that ketamine has in the brain. So first of all, ketamine exerts anti-inflammatory effects in the brain by lowering cytokines, lowering NF-kappa B, and also lowering some of the markers of inflammation. Ketamine also interacts with the presynaptic and extrasynaptic NMDA receptors that many of us know about. So it could antagonize or block these receptors, which has a downstream effect on a variety of uh, neurotransmitter pathways. In particular, one pathway that often gets ignored is the fact that ketamine can also bind to and activate the mu opioid receptors. And this is part of the reason why they think it has an antidepressant effect. You can see in this next diagram here, some of the proposed mechanisms mediating ketamine rapid antidepressant effects. We know that ketamine can obviously alter brain neurochemistry and neurotransmission beyond simply antagonizing the NMDA receptors. So it can block GSK3 activity. It can activate mTOR signaling it can activate BDNF, it can activate uh, CREB, which then has downstream effects on AKT, mTOR, and P70. And also, 
ketamine can, you know, uh, affect the opioid receptors that, again, not many people realize. And then finally, it can protect another pathway as phosphorylation. So obviously, the title of this video was about exploring a ketamine alternative. And that alternative is something known as D-serine. So this particular study was titled Acute Amino Acid Administration of D-serine, similar to ketamine, produces antidepressant-like effects through identical mechanisms. Now, this is pretty profound because what we're seeing is simply an amino acid that you know exerts an antidepressant effect similar to ketamine, and they're proposing through identical mechanisms. So I'm just gonna read a snapshot from the study. Increasing evidence suggests that the glutamatergic, so the glutamate system, plays a key role in the pathophysiology of psychiatric disorders, including depression and schizophrenia. Consequently, focusing on the glutamatergic system is a new target for treating depression and schizophrenia. For example, the non-competitive NMDA antagonist ketamine at sub-anesthetic doses has reported to cause mood enhancement in healthy individuals and rapidly ameliorate depressive symptoms in depressed patients. In addition, NMDAR antagonists such as ketamine or phencyclidine have been reported to transiently induce schizophrenia-like symptoms. On the basis of the prediction that the enhancement of the NMDA function will improve pathological state induced by NMDA antagonists, the administration of several amino acids such as glycine, which we all know about, D-serine, a co-agonist, or sarcosine, a glycine transporter 1 inhibitor, which activates the NMDA receptors, can alleviate psychotic symptoms in patients with schizophrenia. And the authors also noted that in this study, only D-serine and ketamine, but not desipramine, increased activation of the mTOR signaling and release of BDNF following a single dose. The rapid induction of mTOR signaling and the increased BDNF level mediates the fast-acting antidepressant effects of ketamine, which may represent a mechanism common to other putative rapid antidepressants. By contrast, traditional antidepressants do not rapidly increase mTOR signaling and BDNF levels, elevated BDNF and mTOR levels are only evident following chronic treatment, which corresponds to the time course of the clinical effect. So one drawback associated with typical antidepressants is that they have a uh, build-up time for them to actually exert an antidepressant effect. Um, the authors noted that therefore the rapidly increased mTOR signaling and BDNF level is proposed to be crucial for the development of antidepressants with fast acting onset. Our results from the series of experiments suggest that D-serine at high dose might have rapid antidepressant effects in humans similar to that of ketamine. So now you're probably wondering what is D-serine? Well, D-serine is an amino acid that plays a role in cognitive enhancement and schizophrenia treatment. D-serine is a natural key regulator in the formation of memories. So D-serine, you know, possesses some nootropic-like properties. It is an amino acid naturally synthesized in brain cells, which aid in long-term potentiation, which is basically the pathway associated with improving memory. Administration of D-serine has been shown to enhance learning and working memory. And in some cases, some people have noted an improved ability to learn and recall complex functions. So let's take a look at some of D-serine's mental effects. D-serine does appear to influence the brain in some other unique ways. And I really want to you know, highlight this particular study. D-serine facilitates the effectiveness of extinction to reduce drug-primed reinstatement of cocaine-induced cocaine conditioned place preference. So D-serine treatment given during extinction was effective in reducing drug seeking for more than four weeks of abstinence after the last cocaine exposure. These findings demonstrate that D-serine may be an effective adjunct therapeutic agent along with cognitive behavioral therapy for the treatment of cocaine addiction. So we're seeing that you know, D-serine D -serine itself may exert some degree of anti-addiction-like qualities. Again, D-serine is also useful in a case of PTSD. So this particular study was titled Pilot Controlled Trial of D-serine for the Treatment of Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder. 
and D-serine had a positive effect on post-traumatic stress disorder. So when we take a look at the, the safety of D-serine, this study was titled D-serine, a cross-species review of safety. Now, even before considering human to rat differences in renal physiology, using current FDA-guided monitoring paradigms, D-serine appears safe at currently studied maximal dosages with potential safety in combination with other Dow inhibitors. So what's also really interesting is that um, D-serine has some parallels to glycine. I know many of us on this channel like to use glycine to improve um, sleep quality and to reduce anxiety, lower cortisol. So D-serine is comparable in function to glycine. A glycinergic substance is a substance that modulates the body's glycine system and D-serine is a substance or is basically a so-called ligand which is a molecule that can bind to this glycine binding site at the NMDA receptors and is technically called a gliotransmitter. The effect of D-serine appears to be more biologically relevant and generally more potent than that of glycine. So in terms of dosages, from what I've seen in some of the studies, use of D-serine has been documented at a dose of 2000 milligrams total per day for up to six weeks and no adverse effects occurred at this dosage. So you're probably gonna be wondering where to purchase D-serine. At the time of this video, hopefully I will have a link down below in the video description if you want to check that out. And again, this particular amino acid is you know, not regulated um, and so it's not a banned substance and you know, potentially possesses some of the similar antidepressant effects as ketamine without many of the associated side effects or drawbacks with ketamine. So hopefully you found this video interesting or insightful. Um, please do like the video. It does help me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks everyone for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.